so good evening everybody so exciting seeing all your comments arriving i'm just turning the sound off on my chat computer how nice to see you all here once again for yet another photography lockdown live where we're going to be looking at a few of your images obviously i've been sitting here kind of mesmerized looking at some of your comments waiting <laughs> you're chatting together and i think i was a couple of minutes late pressing the go button but there you go how cool to see you from all over the world we've got some of our regulars here i noticed we've got a few first timers as well i want to say a big hello and welcome to you guys thank you for coming um i like the way you're all discussing the weather in a very english sort of a fashion so what are we going to be looking at well i think you can guess there's a couple of things that we probably need to talk about isn't there <laughs> so let's do the serious one first <clears throat> now i'm always telling you guys to try something different something unusual get outside your comfort zone and just see what happens because it's vitally important just to move forward and just to grow, you know, as a human being, never mind as a, as a, as a photographer. Um, now, when I suggested that uh, you guys do the judging, it was like, well, let's see what happens. You know, my hope was that you'd absolutely love it, feel a bit more involved, you know, and benefit from closely examining some other pictures. I'm really thinking about what is it about this that draws me? What is it I really, really like? Um, you know, but also it didn't really work out, did it? Quite how I imagined. But we learned a lot. Um, you know, this experience certainly taught me that, you know, I should have given you probably some clear assessment criteria and, 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 and clearer ideas of what the deadline should be, how many votes you can have. Um, I also realise now from comments that, you know, you kind of missed the surprise of not knowing who is going to win until the end of this evening's thing. Uh, I also learned that the group prefers a standalone judge. And, you know, and I'm honoured that you place such value on my opinion. So, you know, the, there's always stuff to learn. Notice how the benefits have actually outweighed the cost. We've learned something. I've certainly learned something. Don't be afraid to try stuff out. Don't be afraid to, to make mistakes, you know, in your photography as well as anything else that you choose to have a go at. Because that is how we learn and how we grow. Um, you know, you try things. We tried this, didn't really work. Okay, we've learned a bunch of stuff, let's move on. <clears throat> so, what else do we need to talk about? <laughs> the excitement that occurred this afternoon. When we did the This Is My Hope Challenge and borrowed the theme from Alabare, and I thought it'd be a good idea, you know, if, if we could support them because when you entered their competition, you made a small donation to them to help them do the good work they do with homeless and underprivileged people. And if you remember back then in that video, I said, I really want some PLDers to nail this. I want to see you get into the points. And loads of you have. <laughs> I just like, I got a couple of emails this afternoon, you know, saying, I can't believe it, I'm in the points. And then when I looked at the page, um, you know, when one of the other guys emailed me and says, lots of us have got into this exhibition. It's like, well done, guys. Well done. I mean, I just think that is totally amazing. It's really deeply fulfilling for me. <clears throat> and it just shows. Maybe some of you were really nervous to enter that competition. Maybe some of you didn't enter because you thought, well, I'll never get anywhere, you know, and just reading some of the comments that have come up, people saying, oh my God, I can't believe it. I've been chosen to be in their exhibition. So that's really cool. They contacted me a while ago and said that their exhibition has had to be canceled for obvious reasons at the moment. And they're hoping to reschedule. So um, I will make every effort to go along there when it is on. So you guys get to see it. Cause I know some of you are not in the UK. Um, congratulations, congratulations. Okay, so you chose the winning image and our runners up, but I still get to choose things I want to talk about and the shortlist shout outs. So why don't we have a look at this? Why don't we get going on this? I would love to have been able to show you. I should have set my shot up earlier, shouldn't I? And I didn't. I would love to have been able to show you um, some of the shots that were chosen for the competition, but unfortunately, 
I didn't have time and wasn't able to get ready to do that. So let's have a little look at this week's pictures and let's get stuck into our feedback session. First off, this seems to be a bit of a regular thing. <sighs> Thanks, Kay. It just seems to go on this one, doesn't it? I don't know how it began, but there we go. This week's duck shout out seems to go to Kay Gill. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with you lot, I really don't. Right, okay, now into the more serious business of looking at some of the pictures. I've got quite a few that I've chosen here. <clears throat> First off, let's look at this one from Julianne Wilson. You know what, Julianne, I just think you caught a lovely little magical moment there. You know, and it fits the theme deep. It's our closest biological relative. You know, and he or she does look like they're a bit deep in thought, and uh, I really rather love it. <clears throat> I think it's a great shot. Now, I don't know whether you did this on purpose or not. It's always hard to tell. However, cameras, when they see something that's predominantly a dark subject, they will brighten it up. And I wonder if that happened here, because to me, this just looks just a little bit kind of lacking in contrast, and like it could do with a little bit less exposure so i hope you don't mind i took the liberty of darkening it a bit guys what do you think so we've got a slightly lighter one here and then the one that i messed about with it's not perfect because i did it in a bit of a hurry and just darkened the shot what do you think which do you think you prefer because i think it is quite possible the camera saw the very dark tones of our chimpanzee's fur and, it, and what it will do is it will go, oh, that's too dark. And it will try and brighten it up. Uh, sorry, that's too bright. And it will try and, uh, sorry, that's too dark. And it will try and brighten it up. So even if you shoot manually and you set the exposure according to what the light meter says, um, you're still going to end up with a picture that's too bright because the camera doesn't realize that actually it should be a little bit darker. Now, I also get it. We're losing the eyes in the darker one. And it's always nice to have a little bit of eye shine and all the rest of it. But in a way, I think with this thoughtful sort of a look, it's okay and it works. So um, something to watch for, Julian. And also you guys that are struggling maybe with what I have just said about how the camera will get it wrong. If you do precisely what the light meter tells you, what you're doing is the same as if the camera was shooting in auto mode. It's just that you are twiddling the knobs and the dials instead of the camera doing it for you. Um, I can help you with all of that good stuff with the Ultimate Beginners course, any of you who haven't done it. And if you have done it and you're struggling still, it's because you need to just go and practice these things a lot. Don't just go and do it once and think you know it. Um, another shot here, which I think is a beautiful picture. Um, look at these deep and beautiful eyes that Nancy shot. Isn't that just lovely, beautiful brown eyes? But again, I can't help but wonder, it's not quite so pronounced this time. But I did have another little fiddle, Nancy, and I hope you don't mind. And I just slightly darkened it just a bit. And I don't know what you think. I, I just think the eyes are almost stronger because the catch light is stronger. It's always worth just keeping a little look on, on the exposures and just thinking about it. You know, just think that the, if you've got something predominantly dark in your viewfinder, the camera will probably try and brighten it and vice versa. If you've got something predominantly bright, it will try and brighten it, which brings us on to this one from uh, Raphael. There's something about this I kind of like. I mean, there is a depth to it. And I kind of like it. And, you know, when I, when I read your comments and realized, you know, you just shot it with a phone. Again, you know, you can use whatever camera you like. But there's something I kind of like about it. But again, Raphael, I hope you don't mind. I took the liberty of just brightening it only a tiny bit. What do you prefer, guys? I don't know. I'm actually torn between these two because I quite like the lower contrast version. But I also quite like the brighter one. Which do you prefer, brighter or darker? <clears throat> Just pop it in the comments. I'm intrigued to know what you think. Um, oh, great. Straight away. Here we go. Yeah, we're getting a 50-50 thing. Definitely the original, the brighter version, the darker version, the brighter. <laughs> we're split down the middle, aren't we? it's just a choice and of course even with your phone most phones you can control exposure if you want to um, I guess they will do it differently an iPhone I think you sort of tap and hold for a minute and you can slide up and it'll go brighter and slide down it'll go a little bit darker 
but I do like your shot. I like the depth. I do like the way you've done it. And it's those little pools of light on either side that work really well. I'm going back to your version, <clears throat> the slightly lower contrast version. Uh, we've got another one here, which is a little bit dark. Iggy Rizu. <clears throat> now, I get your idea here because, you know, we're going for depth. You've got layers of depth. You've got the houses. You've got what looks like a multi-story car park or something curling round. I don't know if it's a walkway. And then you've got the mountains in the distance. I also get the moodiness. Um, Iggy, I, I think you've got a little bit too much going on here. I like the layers. We've got the sky. We've got the mountains. We've got the mid and we've got the houses. And I like your thought of the layers. But I think there's a little bit too much going on. I also think maybe you could have dealt with possibly brightening it up just a touch. Um, I think I saw something in the comments saying that you, you, you spoke about this. Forgive me because I can't read it on my screen. It's just too small on this one. But <clears throat> I see where you're going, but see if you can isolate something within the shot more. Uh, I like your layers, but I think it's just it's a bit too busy. It's hard to know what we're supposed to look at. We're on the subject of exposure, and there's there's a couple of these. Um, Graham Carroll, I like your idea. You know, deep in concentration, you know, trying to photograph the flames. But you know, we've got an exposure problem here, and it's not like you've done something wrong. This is a really tough exposure because the heart of the fire is going to be ridiculously bright. And we can see here, you've done something in post-production to try and pull it down. So we've got that sort of gray bit in the middle, which looks kind of odd. Now, I know there's a lot of talk online about, you know, you mustn't burn out highlights. It's bad, wicked and wrong. You should go to jail immediately. Um, nonsense. Some things do burn out. The very heart of a fire will burn out to your eyes, but a camera will make it burn out even more. Eyes and cameras see light differently. This is a very, very, very tough shot to pull off. How could you do it? Um, my thoughts are probably you'd either have to introduce some light so that you can make where you are a bit brighter. You'd probably need to have a light of some sort coming onto you so you're lifting the light levels between the two so they're a little bit closer. Um, you could do two exposures, one for the fire, one for you, and then blend them because you've got all that blackness. You could do that in post-production. The other place you could go with this, which may or may not work, fires are tricky things to do this with, would be to do um, to bracket your exposures um, as raw files. So you'd have whatever you, know, you choose as your middle exposure and then shoot one, maybe two stops below. Um, I'd probably air towards the below, actually. Two stops below, maybe one stop over. You can set it onto burst mode and then the camera will just go, it'll do it really quick. The thing is, if the flames move too far, sometimes it can look a little bit fiddled with, but if because it does it so quick, it'll probably be all right. But then you'd need to combine those raw files in Lightroom or something. And what will happen then is you have a much more natural looking fire. Um, this is one of those things where we butt up against the laws of physics, cameras and eyes see light differently and by the way guys the really the only reason to bracket exposures isn't hoping you get it right if you're doing that then um, you need to learn how to control your exposure um, the reason really for bracketing is so that you can HDR merge and make something look natural HDR doesn't just mean the super contrasty super colorful um, look that kind of was very trendy a year or so ago and it still exists High dynamic range, HDR, you can use it to make something look natural, like this, which doesn't look natural. And there's very little, if anything, you can do in the camera to get it to do that. But good effort, Graham. Good effort. What do we got here? Now we've got another one here, and this is a tricky one. Um, this one's from Sam, Sam Sharuth. Um I like your idea, and I quite like this idea of descending into the cellar, you know, the little girl going into the cellar, and it's scary. So I can understand why you've exposed and made it dark on purpose. It's the scary thing. Now, the problem is the brightest part of the picture is her pale blue top. 
the little bright bits on her shorts and where the light is just catching onto her legs and her face is almost completely missing. This is always one of those problems with this type of shot. How could you manage it? Um, there is a little bit of light on a doorpost or something next to her. Now, I think maybe if she was just a little bit further forward, maybe the light would fall on her face. But the big thing is would be to have her wear darker clothing so that either the light on her face and her clothing will balance more or maybe the light will catch her face more, or even you may need to sort of, you know, put a candle somewhere or something and, and position it so it's just catching her face. Because I think the more important thing here is the face rather than what she's wearing. Um, Annette has just said, how about if she was backlit? That would probably work well. Um, but again, we probably wouldn't quite see her face. Um, bounce some light back into her face. Yeah, another one from Annette. Um, possibly. Uh, but of course, you know, it's like within the levels of what is doable. I think the main thing actually is having her wear something that, that's a little bit darker, that reflects a bit, a little less light. And then if you could find a way, find that position, I think if she was a little bit further forward, maybe whatever that bit of light is on the side might pick up her face more. But good effort, Sam. Good effort. Nice idea. Holding a little lamp. Good one, Lenny. Yeah. Um... I was about to say, how do I pronounce your name? But of course, you can't tell me, can you? <laughs> um, yeah. Sam's saying maybe you darkened it a bit too much. Maybe. But even if you, you had it brighter, still the brightest part of the picture would be the clothes she's wearing rather than her face. And, and you know, she's got a great little expression going on there, but it's a little tiny bit lost. But good effort. Light is everything. It's just everything. And I think... You know, here we got a nice shot from Wendy Wilson. What I like about this is the light, particularly. I like it, you know, your husband's deep in thought, I like it. But again, it's a light issue for me because you've got a gorgeous piece of light just flowing through that shot there. But it's kind of going through his midriff and highlighting, you know, uh, his midriff and his arms. Now, had he possibly moved along the rocks a bit, or maybe to his left, you could have had that beautiful piece of light just coming across his face. And it would have just kissed his face as he's looking off into the distance. The other thing maybe is if he'd sat on the grass and then back against the rock, particularly the one to his right, because you can see the light is on that rock. And then you'd have had that slice of light coming through and making us look at his face rather than his folded arms and midriff. Um, but... Nice idea, Wendy. I think you've given it a nice little bit of space. It's, it's, yeah, it's nicely put together. You spotted some great light. Um, it's always like remembering, okay, how do I move my subject? How can I really maximize on that light? Someone else who seems to be catching my attention a bit at the moment is our friend, Mr. Tom Oswald. Um, nice idea, Tom. Very you as well. The power of the mind to levitate acorns. What a strange man you are. <laughs> um, I get where you're going, and you've actually got some nice little catch lights. I think, for me, the sky is kind of fighting with you. And the way the light is coming from, it's another light thing. I can't help but wonder if you had some trees round to the side a bit, um, whether you could have done this so that your background was the trees without that bit of bright sky going on up there. And then the light would have been behind you and the acorns. And I think it might have just brought those acorns to life a bit more whilst you were levitating. Um, guessing you shot this with a self-timer or with an assistant. Um, yeah, uh, give it another go, mate. Try, try backlighting it and see what happens. It's quite good light. I, I mean, well, there's no such thing as bad light, is there? All light's good. Um, the thing is, is, is appropriateness. Now, if we were gonna go just for kind of like quite a moody male portrait, those deep shadows alongside your face, they're, they're pretty good. Um, but yeah, have a go with the backlight. Watch out for things like that bright area. And as lots of people keep saying, there's a dust spot on your sensor, but I think you've already had that conversation. We've got a lovely little piece of light happening here, Christoph, uh, in your picture of this flower. I don't know what it is. If anyone knows what it is, please tell me. I'm, I'm not very good with things like that. I just look at them and think they're great. 
Um, but you've got some beautiful light going on here. It really is rather lovely. But that big leaf over the top is kind of fighting with the flower for dominance. Um, to me, it's like the leaf is fighting. It's almost like that poor little flower sort of going, get off. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful light. Look at the textures in that leaf and all the rest of it. I'm just wondering maybe if you could come in tighter on, on the flower, possibly remove the leaf or find another flower head. Although that leaf is helping to contribute with the light, I'm not quite sure the way to go about it. Possibly whether you could like lift the leaf up a bit and, and sneak in a little closer and just lose some of the top of the picture. But you've got some great light on that, on that uh, flower. So what are people saying? It seems most people are saying, Dahlia, one or two of you are comedians and saying it's an orange flower. Thanks. <laughs> OK, and onwards to John Clark. Um, where are we? Oh, we're in Weymouth because we've got ghost ships off the coast of Bournemouth down here as well where they're laid up. I don't know if this one is laid up. I guess it is. I like your framing, John. You know, you've thought about that, haven't you? you you've kind of thought about it and you've, you've brought a level of depth to the shot by using that framing and a bit of foreground. I'm wondering if you could have found another bit of framing because that bush poking up there, I find to be a little bit annoying. It's kind of like I hit the bush before the boat and it's kind of not quite where we want to go. The other thing is light. You've got a very, very grey day going on there. Um, and I think these sorts of subjects probably need a, a little bit stronger light. If you've got a really strong subject, like a ship, a building, a tower block, architecture, it's best to have some nice strong light. Now I get it, you were there when you were there. And this is also part of photography, is you have to go there when the conditions are right, when you can't control them yourself. Um, lose the bush, says Glyn Haskins. Oh boy, we could go off on some tangents of that one, couldn't we? But we won't. Um, yeah, but I like the way you framed it. I think you could probably gone a little bit tighter. Something else you might have been able to do is to maintain that framing you've got with the plants. Maybe make the focal length a little bit longer. So you've got a bit more zoom if you've got a longer lens and move yourself back a bit if you had the space to do it because it would kind of help bring that ship in a bit more. You'd, you'd narrow the field of view. You'd still be able to get the, the framing as you moved back. But I get where you're going. Uh, what do we got? Um, 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 Jared's saying looks a bit overexposed. I'm not so sure it's overexposed, Jared. I just think, and then also I don't know how your monitor is because Everyone's monitor's different unless they're all properly calibrated. Um, I'm not so sure it's overexposed. Um, I think it's just because the light is quite bright and flat and there's a lot of haze in the air. You can sort of see when you look at the boat in the distance, it's, very, it's, it's a bit hazy. Um, would dehazing help with the ship, asked Jane Barnes. Probably, if you've got um, Lightroom or, or similar software which has a dehaze function, you might be able to dehaze it a bit. But I think the biggest problem is it, it needs some light. Um, so if you're off Weymouth, let's think your that ship is facing to the west, I guess. So that is an afternoon, late afternoon shot when the sun is coming from the front of the ship, possibly you know across the, you're coming in from the front, maybe a little earlier. Although this I don't know where's the sun. It's lower in the sky now, isn't it? Yeah, late afternoon, early evening shot, I think this would be. So the light's coming from the right. Um, anyway, Jane Barnes is off to Weymouth, all the way from New Zealand to Weymouth. Thank you for getting up so ridiculously early once again, Jane. Donald Daly. Sun sinking in the deep. I just... Now, I'm not... I, sunsets are beautiful, but I can't help feeling sunsets get overdone. There, there's like, we see millions of sunsets and it's like, mm. but I think you've got a really nice one here. Um, it's that you've got that beautiful separation, that line of just above the horizon cloud and you've captured the sun in, in it in just the right decisive moment. It's just sort of peeping, isn't it? We do like a peep, don't we? It's just sort of peeping through between the horizon and the clouds. And you've got some gorgeous colors going on there. Yeah, um, I think you got a nice shot. What can I say? I took the liberty because I just thought, hmm, I think this would work quite well as a panoramic. So I just kind of chopped the top and bottom off a bit. 
The other thing I think you could do with this, because it is so symmetrical, you've got those lovely clouds, is my question, if you're here, Donald, I'd love to know, did you position the sun there to kind of adhere to the rule of thirds or not? If you're here, I'd love to know. I'm just scanning on the other one to see if I can see you. I can't at the moment. Um, because my thoughts would be, you could easily chuck that sun right smack in the middle. I think it would work really, really well. Um, it's a very strong thing, and I think it'd be more eye-catching with the sun right in the middle. And I know the pundits say, don't put the subject in the middle of the picture. <laughs> That's all I have to say on that. But it's a great shot, well spied and well captured. You've got some beautiful colours going on there, Donald. Um, quick look to see if you're there. Right, Phil, Stabler, Stabler. Let me look at it on this one, Stabler. <clears throat> I just, I'm not going to look at your comments. Um, I think you've got a great little thing going on here. I really do, Phil. You know, you've got the depth to the shot because you've got that lovely blue reflection in the water taking us back to whoever. Is that you and your son? Is that someone you know? Doesn't matter. But it, it's really taking us on that nice little journey. And you're kind of lost in that. They are lost in that little kind of moment of whatever they're doing, you know, poking around, finding little wiggly things down in the rock pools. Um, it's really, really nice. Again, I hope you don't mind, I took a liberty of fiddling with your picture a bit, particularly the composition. Now, I know I have just said to Donald, I think that would work really, really well with the sun smack in the middle, which is what you've got here. I think this one works a little better if you just move up to the top a bit. Um, I hope you uh, don't mind, but I'm just looking to see if you're here, Phil. It doesn't look like you are at the moment. <clears throat> Will you not stop talking about ducks? I'm going to get you a therapist. Um, yeah, I just think it's really nice. Which do you prefer, guys? Come on, pay attention. We've had enough duck action already. Um, so we got Phil's original, which is a beautiful shot. I am not, not saying it isn't. And then I just took the liberty of taking that little extra tusk of grass off and just moving them a little higher up. Why did I do that? It's the unusual that's eye-catching, and I think moving them a little higher up just makes the shot a little bit more unusual. Because, you know, when we see something that looks the same, we see a lot of pictures with the subject in the middle. When you move things around a little bit, so it's just a little bit more unusual, that's when it starts to become a bit more eye-catching. But a great effort, Phil. Uh, well captured. I hope that was of, of use. Um, Martin Smart here, you had a really great idea. Um, and I like it. I really do. And you're socially distancing and everything. Um, I really do. I love the fact that, you know, we've got shapes going on. We've got, you know, the person on the left doing something weird with their arms like that. And we've got the other one reaching over the other one. And, I'm going to get you. Um, I really do. Deep shadows. I think it's. I think it's a great shot. What can I say? Um, if you could have lost, I'm being picky. I'm coaching you hard because you know I like it so much. As you know, there's no point in me being a soft and cushy coach. That little dark bit in the corner where you've caught a bit of bush. Uh, we're having a bush problem tonight, aren't we? <clears throat> Is kind of like a little bit distracting. Maybe if you could have somehow tilted it down a tiny bit, moved a fraction, but you have really done it well. You've got the sun in just the right place, and I love the way you've got everyone under control, or not, as the case may be. Um, it's, it's really cool. Again, I hope you don't mind. I took the liberty question for you guys. I thought it might look good in black and white. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? Colour or black and white? This is another one. I'm deeply undecided. <clears throat> and as I look at this, I'm kind of starting to change my mind. Do you ever do that? All oh, right, we've got a pretty much, yeah, pretty consistent. Most of you prefer the color. Um, do you ever do that yourselves? You kind of do something, you look at one of your shots, and you go, yeah, no, I really like that. And then when you look at it tomorrow, you go, you know what? I think I preferred it as it was. 
Maybe we all change our minds. Nice shot, Martin. Well created and well maintained. Well controlled. <clears throat> David Duncan. We've got some good stuff going on here. Um, again, you've done a great job with, with depth in a picture. With depth, you know, I like the lines on the bar. I really like those reflections on the bar. My only thing here is the lines, which are coming perfectly in front of the camera, are kind of taking us through that great reflection and then we're sort of crashing into the bottles and we're not quite sure where to go. Now, human figures are powerful things in pictures because we look at them. Um, and the barman down that end is kind of disengaged. I think if you could have got a better decisive moment going on here, if you could have got the barman to come and stand right in front of you, so you've got those two lines that are coming in, then you probably have a reflection of the barman right in front of you in the bar, and then reflections of the bottles going on down either side, and I think it would have been a more, much more powerful picture. Particularly if you could have got the barman kind of interacting with you. How did you do this? I don't know if you're here, David. I'd love to know. <coughs> Did you have the camera just sitting on the bar in front of you and you went click? In which case you could possibly, depending on what sort of camera it is, you could just go, excuse me, mate, and get him to come over. And then while you're talking, just start taking pictures of him or ask him, hey, dude, will you come over here? And, 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 and um, But yeah, good effort. Really good effort. It is a great image. As Moose just said. <clears throat> what have we got going on here? Jay Moffat, what a beautiful thing. Um, you know, look at that, that mist rolling over those hills. Isn't that just gorgeous? And you know, the light, the backlight, the light coming through it, that is what is waking that mist up. To me, it looks just a little bit overexposed. I think you could have brought this exposure down just a little bit. Um, that highlight on the water is very, very strong. Of course, in this situation, you have that light on the water. It does burn out and you can't recover it. And if you did recover it, it would just look kind of odd because there's meant to be a highlight there. Our eyes would see that highlight. Um, as Emma has just said, like the person too, which is where I was coming next. We got someone down there and looking at the angle, I think they're doing the photographer thing. Like that. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Um, by all means, let us know if you're here, Jay. <clears throat> um, I'd like to have seen a bit more made of that person, if it was possible. If it's a friend of yours, if it's someone you know, get them to walk up the path. Uh, if not, see if you can catch them walking up the path. With a shot like this, with such a huge amount of contrast... Um, I never would say you have to shoot raw, but it would have benefits because you could, again, sort of pull the two a little closer together. Or if you're shooting JPEG, just kind of like bring that exposure down a bit, maybe. And uh, I think it might have been a bit more powerful. Another reason for bracketing, actually, guys, is if you are shooting JPEG and you are with a, you know, then, then it, it can help. You know, you have a reason because you're going like, right, I'm just not quite sure what the camera's going to do with my raw file, so I'm just going to bring the exposure down a bit or up a bit and it gives a little bit more leeway for whatever the camera chooses to do with your raw file because it doesn't know what you want but great effort and you have got lovely layers of depth going on in here Camilla again you've got a nice distant shot and I'm loving all that deep blue twilighty hour reflection you ever notice guys how often a reflection polarizes the sky um, I can't remember, there was a name for the effects and I don't remember what it is. Um, I really don't remember what it is. But that deep, deep blue in the water, and I love that little wiggly reflection, which I'm guessing is the light on the bridge. However, we've got this gorgeous depth and line. Now there's a boat coming the other way, right under the bridge, if you can see a little boat. I think, Camilla, it would have been stronger if you could have waited until it got closer. Maybe just before it got to that little white streak in the river. Just hung around, waited, let it come, let it come, let it come, let it come, click. Because I think you, you, you would have a little bit more of a point of focus. Um, 
but it is nice it is a nice shot no question We've got another really deep shot here, and I think we've got a similar thing going on, Richard. Um, you've got a lot of depth going on, and it's taking us to the light at the end of the tunnel, light at the end of the bridge. Um, but I feel it needs something of a little bit more interest going on somewhere. Now, this could be probably one or two things. Again, either someone riding a bicycle just coming in at that end, very small down the end, someone leaning against the railing, possibly. But another thing you could do would be to introduce an artifact, bring something into the shot. Um, and it's amazing what you can do. Something like, something with a strong color, because we've got lovely, subtle, gentle tones going on here. How about if you've got something like a coca-cola can and crushed it and just like a bit of drop litter and had it in the foreground if you've ever watched top gear on um you know bbc television you guys watch out because they use this device a lot in top gear and the cinematography photography in that is absolutely breathtaking bit of television but if you watch you will notice a lot of the time you will see something like I don't know, an empty road shot, and then you get something go whoosh, past like this. But in the foreground, there's something. It could be an empty cigarette packet, a crushed Coke can, a bit of litter, a banana skin. It could be just some leaves, something that will move, you know, as the car goes past. Okay, they're dealing with video. But it's a device. It's, it's an introduction of an artifact. And it does work. It draws attention. Um, particularly something with a strong color in this case. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show off now because I taught Ian May, who's Director of Photography on Top Gear, how to use Photoshop. Um, I met him a couple of times in the past and he's done me a couple of very kind favours. A very, very talented man with a camera is Ian May. Keith Thompson, what a beautiful picture. I just love this. This is just the most beautiful pool of light going on. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous picture. I don't know if you know these people or whether it's a grab shot. Um, if you were a commercial, um, what's the word, portrait photographer who did environmental portraiture, pools of light, this sort of situation, it sells like crazy. This is what people crave when they say, oh, we want to get some pictures of me and my kids out in the woods or something. This sort of thing is gorgeous. They are beautifully backlight, backlit. You know, I'm always banging on about light, but it is honestly the light that makes this picture. So I'm going to be harsh on you because you've got such a beautifully composed shot in such amazingly great light. You've got layers of depth going on through the shot. My only thing is the decisive moment, this moment. Now, I know we got this little tender moment with, with Dad reaching down to daughter's hand. I'm watching, actually, in the comments to see if Keith's here. I don't know if you are. I can't see anything. <clears throat> um, reaching down for the little girl's hand, which is a great little moment. But there's something about the way both Dad and Mum are both looking over there as opposed to at their daughter. Do you know what I mean? Something like that. I think there needs to be a little bit of a, an interaction, an engagement going on. Now, if you know these people, I'd have just yelled down there, look at her! <clears throat> Do as you're told. Um, if you don't know them, wait. Have your camera on the go. Just hold that composition, particularly if you've got burst mode. Just click it in a burst mode or something. Because then, if you do get that moment when she actually reaches up, because there's a moment coming, I think, where she's going to reach up and look at her dad like that. Click, boom. You've suddenly got that little human interaction going on, and, and it would make that so, so powerful. Um, beautiful shot, Keith, and I hope you don't mind me being uh, pretty hard with my coaching there. We got... Another great idea here from Michael, <clears throat> Michael James. I like your idea for creating depth in the shot. Um, you know, using this, you're using a device, aren't you? You're using this kind of eye sculpture thing, you know, to frame up what's going on. 
I think what would have worked better, the, the light isn't really playing ball with you. If you look where the shadows are, the light's kind of coming bam in from this side and, it, and it's making the, the, the eye sculpture so, so strong. The thing which you've got in the background, your subject, if you like, the buildings, the, that bit of city skyline is a little bit lost. Now here's another thing that you could try doing. That would be to move back further away and stick on your longer lens if you've got one, a zoom. Just kind of zoom it like this. And then you would kind of been able to bring those buildings a bit bigger in through the eye, through the pupil. Um, and I think time of day would have made a difference. The sun was lower in the sky. Now the sun is fairly low because there is quite a long shadow. But maybe at the other end of the day, it's a tough call. And maybe it's one that won't work that well. I was shooting a PLD the other day and I was messing around for a good hour hoping the light would come right and it didn't. Got to come back and do it another time. Um, good effort, nice thinking. We've got another beautiful piece of light going on. You, you're doing some good lighting stuff here at the moment. Sue Owen, I don't know if you're here, Sue. Ah, oh, here we go. I shot this with the sun in the heart. Oh, sorry. Right, okay. Ignore that. Um, Sue Owen. Lovely little deep moment. We've got, we got a child sort of deep in their own thoughts or deep in their own misery because they've just been banned to the woodland for being so naughty or something like that. Um, deep in despair. I'm hoping they're just deep in their own thoughts and daydreams. But what I do like, Sue, is how you use that pool of light. You saw that little pool of light and you used it. And, you know, that's great. Great job. This is what it's all about, guys, is looking around, seeing light. Light's weird stuff because it's invisible. You can't see light. You can see the light and you can see the thing it's landing on, but you can't see the light. And you have to look around, learn to see light and figure out ways of using it. You've done that very, very well here, Sue. Um, I want to just in advance say I did a little bit of cropping on your picture. Um, what do you think, guys? I just got rid of the bits, a little bit of tree on either side. I just took it in, just that little bit closer, particularly that bright bit behind the tree on the right. Because personally, I think it makes it much more powerful in making us look at uh, the child. Also, you notice I took a little piece off the bottom as well and just brought the child very, very slightly lower in the frame in the second one. And you see how minute little changes like this can massively strengthen an image. It's very easy to get lost in looking at the subject when you're taking, you know, for, when you're doing photography, when you're making images. You've got to remember to forget the subject for a little while and consider the whole picture. So what's the difference between these two? Okay, I did it with a little crop in Photoshop. But the easiest way of the lot to do it is why you all stood there, because the difference between this one and this one is what? It's possibly three or four millimeters of focal length. You could move forward a tiny bit, that would do it. And just a tiny little tilt upwards of the camera, which would lower your subject in the frame. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of difference and that's all it is but it's a great shot and i really take my hat off to you for seeing that little bit of light um we've got another quite interesting little thing here i thought from colin kids deep in thought deep in play um and i kind of like it but what's getting me here colin is what is that on the left what's that doing that weird thing in the corner is that your hand or a camera strap or something um i'm not sure is it something you, you put there to try and um oh sue's here from the tree shot originally there were more trees cool sue you did a great job i'm sorry i'm going to come back um yeah what's going on here what's this this thing in the corner um, I'm not sure if it's a shadow, whether it's something that's supposed to be there as part of the shot or just an accident, but it's a shame because I think you actually had quite a nice little moment going on there with the kids. We've got another 
tender little moment here as well, um, which I think is really rather lovely by Boisvert. Is that correct? <clears throat> I would pronounce it Boisvert. Um, it is a little tender moment. I'm not entirely sure that your, um, you know, reverse vignette, you know, the brightening around the edges is, is, is necessarily adding something. Um, the light's not bad. And I know it's hard to do these things, but that big lump of blue in the background is, is kind of annoying because it, it's, it's detracting from this little tender moment. And I don't know how many frames of this you shot. Uh, it's a really great little moment. But I'd be inclined to give them just a little bit more room. I think it's just a bit too tight. Maybe you were trying to lose some of that bright background. I don't know if you know these people or whether you were, you know, doing some bit of candid street stuff here. Um, either way, it's a really nice thought. It's a really nice moment. You know, it's a really deep, loving thing going, oh, I've just seen it. it's in your comment. It's a really deep, loving sort of a picture. I think a little bit more space around them. I think it could also work very well if... Um, the lady was just kind of, you know, doing that thousand yard stare just into into the distance. I think that might kind of work. Um, great job. I'm just looking at some comments here. Brian, was, uh, somebody said different. Yeah, Brian was just saying different location. We better it would. It's finding the moment and the location. These are all the things that you have to contend with when shooting pictures. And I hope, I think you guys are realizing, you know, the camera is so unimportant in photography. Um, it's you. And how hard is it to find that moment happening in great light in the perfect location when you're in the right spot to shoot it? There's a lot of elements that have to be brought together to make things work. And it is all you that does it. You are in control of your own creativity. Being able to shoot manual and, and control your camera, that's beginner stuff. I'm sorry, but it is. That's just anything to do with the camera is beginner stuff. I really stay away from things like beginner, intermediate, advanced. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's all about experience and thinking. Anything related to learning the camera is beginner, period, full stop. Um, the creative side is thinking. And I would also say, you know, all, you know, special techniques with cameras like flashes and strobes. And that, it's all the same stuff, spliced a different way. I would not call that advanced photography. That's just like gadgets and fiddly. It's beginner stuff. It's nuts and bolts. You can put it together. The creative bit is how you use it. How do you capture that bullet? We've all seen the bullet just before it strikes the apple or as it comes out the other side. OK, think of a different way of doing it. That's the creative bit. That's what will make it eye catching. Um, but yeah, great job, Boivre. And I really love this, Patsy Fairclough. <laughs> Did you do this on purpose because you know I'm a negative space junkie? But I do. I just think it's great. I really do. I think it's a deep picture. Okay, we've got the ocean and all the rest of it and all those connotations. But, you know, I like your bravery in having that tiny, eeny little boat going on out there in the sea, so small and so insignificant. It's it's a deep thought, isn't it? You know, like sleeping under the stars and waking up and looking at it, and you just feel so tiny, don't you? Really great job. Um, are you here, Patsy? Sorry, I don't know why I forgot to put my hand down. Are you here, Patsy? No, it doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, constructive criticism, I would say, really, it's a bit too blue. You could have eased back on your blue just a little bit, maybe. It's a bit of a funny turquoisey blue in the sky, too. Um, I don't know if, how, what it was shot on or how. I think the boat is... I quite like it over to the edge, I have to confess. But I don't know. I, I keep thinking, would it be better kind of nearer the centre? So it's just that little bit more lost in all that bigness. Um, who said that? Dick Gillema said, crop, I keep forgetting to put my arms down, don't I? Dick Gillema said, crop out the sky. Yeah, now that could be a hard thing to do because you're then going to zoom in a lot more, which is going to make the boat a lot bigger. But I get your point. I think if the boat could have just been lost against the sea. Uh, horizon isn't quite straight. Someone's just said, 
but we are talking a minute amount. Um, I think the biggest thing is it's just a little bit too blue, but I love your interpretation. Great job. Who we got here? We've got Helen Martin. We're going to have a little look at this one of yours because, again, it's kind of deep in time. I just read your comment. You see, right, I got it. I got it. I honestly read your comment after I said deep in time you put buried in history. Um, I get where you're going with it. It could be a fraction darker. I think it's just a little tiny, any bit too busy. I'm not quite sure what it needs. It's one of those things about exploring the location because you've definitely got something going on here. Um... You've definitely got something going on here. I think the the choice of lighting is probably pretty good because it's a little bit gloomy and it kind of works with your subject matter. Um, I think if you had sort of bright, happy sunlight, it wouldn't be quite so good. Maybe if you get the sun low in the sky there, it could help. Moose was just saying maybe a figure, somebody somewhere, um, possibly. Possibly in the distance, coming up the hedgerow. Again, it's that how do you organise those things? How do you manage those things? These are, this is what makes photography time-consuming. Um, it's all that stuff. Um, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Somebody said, Evelyn was just saying, I'd have cropped out the branches in the roof. I know what you're saying, Evelyn. I kind of get that. They're annoying, but I think actually if you tried to crop them, you'd make them more noticeable because they'd be cut off. I think they'd either need to be very carefully and expertly photoshopped out, which I could never be bothered to do, um, or I think included, more included, so they're not touching the top of the frame. Give it a bit more room. Let it let us see that things are growing out of the top of the building. I think that could have probably worked quite well. Slightly less exposure. There's a very, very bright patch in the sky, which is just a bit annoying. Again, it's time of day. Um, but nice idea, Helen. And I really like this one, weirdly. You're going to go, what, really? Um, but I do, I quite like these, these, these sorts of men at work things. Steve Robinson. Um, you're in a great environment. Now, there's a couple of things going on here. None of it is quite sharp. Um, Steve, watch that shutter speed. You need to kind of get the shutter speed up a bit. Okay, I've just seen what you said. Not my best ever effort. I really respect that. And I really respect that you posted the picture and said that. You know, that is what this is all about. This is what it's all about. Quickly taken shot in poor light. ISO 200. Okay, I think you know what the problem is. Um, yeah, I really respect you posting that. Thank you. Um, yeah, the ISO is a bit low, isn't it? So if you could have pimped that on up around 800,000 ISO, you wouldn't have had to worry about the camera shake and the shutter speed. Then you would have been able to kind of maybe think more about where you're shooting from. So the action, they're all kind of looking in in this direction and you're viewing them very much as an outsider. If that's one of those squares of desks or something like that, could you have got in the middle somehow and been sort of shooting up at them? Do you know what I mean? And, and particularly if you could catch a moment when they're leaning in. I know you've got to be kind of intrusive. I'm guessing you're part of the gang. Maybe you were sneaking a shot during work and they didn't know you were doing it. But, <clears throat> uh, yeah, you're onto something here. You know what the problem is. And I just wanted to pick it up for the rest of you guys. Do you get where I'm going? The ISO is too low. So we've got camera shake. And that is what is causing that softness. That is what is causing that softness. What is that one? That woman is growing out of his head. <laughs> it's marvellous when you have a woman growing out of your head. I enjoy it. I should wear mine more often. I haven't got one. That's a problem. Um, yeah. Anyway, good, nice shot. Nice shot. Good idea. Let's move on to... Um, I'm going to have a little chat about chat with Wendy here. Wendy McDermott. I can see where you're going. You're trying to, to kind of add depth physically with a little bit of foreground and the leaves. You've got the water, still waters run deep. It's just a little bit too busy, Wendy. Nice thought. There are some really good elements here, like that wooden dock and the lilies just in front of it, and there's a little reflection going on. But I think you've just got too many things happening. You've got the reeds in the foreground. We've got the post sticking up in the foreground, the fence. 
then we got bits of tree in the background. I think if you could have somehow got in tighter, maybe just on that area around the middle, because there's some quite nice light on those lilies, you could have had something. Uh, it's just a little too much going on, Wendy. Go back there if you can. Give it another lash. Have another go at it, because, um, you know, there's something really nice there. Burrowing Bunny just said there's some great woodwork, and I absolutely agree there is. Uh, a different angle from Diane. Yeah, you've got something there. Go back and give it another go if you can. Where are we? Ian Rob. You, you emailed me this afternoon, didn't you? Because you are one of the people who got uh, into the Alabare exhibition thing. And I don't know what your name is now because you had Ian Rob brackets John and then a different name signed at the bottom of the email. <laughs> what are you hiding, sir? Um, yeah, I like this because I really, really like the kind of monotone colours. There's little hints of blue in the clouds and the silver grey of your Kelpie, your horse. Um, but I feel it needs more room. In order for it to, to have a feeling of depth, I really think it needs more room. Um, you know, I just think it needs more space. I really do. Probably going out to the right. A really kind of ambitious, challenging composition. So if you had a bit more space top and bottom, you had the shot landscape orientation. And because I love that sky, that lovely, lovely grey sky, it works so well. And I think it, it could have been really, really powerful. But um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, guys? I'm seeing a couple of comments here. Great pick, crop is perfect. What do you think? Do you think it might benefit from more space so it would stand out more strongly against that sky? Or do you think it works well as a tight in crop? Because I'm not getting any kind of feeling of depth to it. Um, it's an, it's nice and I know that I tend towards liking space I don't know what do you think um, I'm just intrigued because you know we all think different things we've got a few more spaces you know this is also part of um, you know when you look at pictures it, it is asking yourself I wonder what it would look like like this in fact I would encourage all of you to do this when you look at a shot if you think yeah, i kind of like that ask yourself this question i wonder what it would look like if and then you fill in that blank there was more space it was to crop tighter the composition was lower or higher or whatever really really i mean this practice that because creative photography begins in here and this is where you exercise you don't have to have a camera in your hand just when you're looking at something, just think, I wonder if it would look, how would it look like that? Ask yourself that question, because it starts to force your brain to pre-visualise, and pre-visualisation is vital. It's the key tool. Um, yeah, really interesting. What do we got here? I don't think it works for a depth challenge, but it's a great shot. That's from Michelle. I feel the need to back away. It's too close from Lorraine. Um, yeah, there is. Yeah, I usually do it. Take several different compositions. I would agree. Yeah, I, I do exactly that until you sort of find it. Um, some of you I know know the story. Of the two, you know, that picture I got the two little boats and the reflection <clears throat> in the water. And, and on that webinar, we kind of choreography a composition. We kind of go through all the different stages. You know, as different compositions that I did to find it because you know we don't we rarely go out and just go click <clears throat> awesome picture right i'm just going to pick a couple more to have a look at and then we need to go into our shortlist shout outs because i've got quite a few and i can't believe it's nearly eight o'clock already um i really really like this one linda windsor i think it's fun and i don't know about you guys but i got it straight away absolutely um I do, I just think it's fun. Deep six. Um, you've got some lovely colour, some lovely reflections going on in the water. Now that bright bit of sky up in the corner is kind of difficult. Um, it is causing a bit of a problem. Now I'm just wondering, and I know what it's like controlling balloons. You know I do. Um, could you have moved to your left more? Could we have got 
changed angles, got the camera lower, something picked up reflection and had that really, really bright area of sky and that light path, that lovely light path, more behind your balloon. I don't know. It's just a thought, but it's a nice thought and you've got some great colours. It's a really nice idea going on there. Um, really nice idea. Uh, somebody said, is it in focus? Now, it's funny you say that because I'm looking at my spare monitor here and things look a little bit soft on that, but they look fine on this one. I don't know what's going on, guys. I'm, I'm broadcasting at... Um, yeah, I'm broadcasting as the same as usual, so I don't know, but I, I agree with you. There's a few things I'm seeing on this monitor that don't look quite soft. I don't know. YouTube changed the way it worked. Again, I had a panic. I had to call Joe. Joe, I can't get the bloody live stream to connect. Um, I don't know if they've changed something. But anyway, great shot, great shot, great shot. Um, I want to have a look at this one here as well. Ron. Ron Baber. What a great idea. Freezing some tomatoes. And then you've got that deep black reflection um i do like that i think it's a really great idea and again it shows you what you can do in your controlled environment whether you did this in your home which i guess you possibly did you've got some beautiful lights going on there i quite like the way the skin's breaking on that little tomato in the middle um it's simple black red green awesome <clears throat> i like simple i am simple it's a really really nice shot however um this may be difficult to see given what we've just been talking about. Um, I think you could have done with a tiny bit more depth of field, Ron. Um, I seem to recall, it's hard to see because it's small, but I think the tomatoes at the back are sharp and the ones in the front are soft. I think if you've maybe focused on the one in the front and had a just slightly smaller aperture, a little bit more depth of field, it would work better. Because in this case, I think we need all of it sharp rather than trying to highlight bits of it. But it's a great idea really really attractive bit of work um what else we got going on here here's another one which i was particularly impressed with um karthik i really like there's things about this i like so much um i really do my only coaching here would be and now i love the way that light is kissing the feather that little thing sticking up, I don't know if that's what the feather's leaning on, it's a little planty, scraggly thing sticking up. Um, it's, it's kind of annoying because it's catching a bit of backlight. The other thing I'm wondering is could you have manipulated the situation and just kind of poke the feather into the ground a bit? So it's maybe at an angle, not just vertical, just poked it in and put that sun directly behind the feather because I think that would have been even more powerful but the light glancing that feather is beautiful i just think somehow there's a little bit bitty going on around it which is distracting which is a shame but it's beautiful light coming through that feather backlighting something translucent it's a really good way to go uh nice shot i've got to bring this one up debbie because <clears throat> I know where you took it. I was stood somewhere near you when you did it. This is when you came down to our one day beginners workshop down, uh, down here on the Dorset Hampshire coast at the weekend, isn't it? I took a very similar picture. I think you've done a really good job, you know, this deep thought thing. Um, I like the way you've got her framed, you know, in her little kiosk uh, and the way she's looking off to the side. However, um, doesn't look quite sharp it looks very unsharp on that monitor over there but it doesn't look quite sharp on this one here either i'm guessing it's probably one of those things of always oh, a great moment and trying to grab it and these things happen little things like just trying to straighten up the counter a bit and it's a touch overexposed that's why her jumper's a bit burnt out but it's a really great little moment debbie i do like it i think it's well captured nicely done nicely found um, here is a very creative, deep thing, which I particularly like from Stephen Swan. I don't know whether, I, I know we're looking up, but I keep thinking I'm looking down. I find this is like one of those Isha drawings. Um, I know we're looking up, but I often feel I'm looking down and that is screwing up my brain. Does anyone else feel like you might be looking down when you look at this? 
rather than up. I think it's an amazing thing. Um, I love your lines. I love the depth to it. I like the way you've composed it. I like the fact you've you kind of tilted it over. You've made it a little bit wacky and eye-catching. You've got your subject right up there in the corner. It's a really nice image. But guys, really, do, do, do any of you kind of get vertigo looking at it like you're looking down even though you know you're looking up? Or am I completely off my nuts? What do you think? What do you think, guys? Is anybody... All oh, right, Graham just said it keeps changing. Yeah, you're right, it does. One minute I go, no, I'm looking up. And then, no, no, it's not. It's looking down. Well, how can it be looking down? Because the guy's sticking up. And it's... I, I really like it. I think it's really great. What else do we have that I want to have a quick look at here? Um, I want to have a quick look at this one, Eric. Um... Because I like the light. I just love this. Eric Devergne. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Forgive me. I do like the light. I love those shadows and pools of light. The light on the trees, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. There's a couple of little things, though. I think we, we're leading on a journey into a lovely deep journey, but we're not arriving somewhere. We're kind of going on this deep journey, but we haven't actually kind of quite got a destination um i don't know if there's a little bench down there in the distance or not i feel it needed somebody walking up through there um in one of the pools of light the way it's exposed the person would need to be in a pool of light um i think although if they were close enough they'd probably get away in one of the pools of shadow but i think it would add interest um something or maybe something like if there was a bicycle leaning against one of the trees but it would need to be quite strong in the shot uh, for that to work. The other thing is, it, forgive me, it looks like, I don't know whether it's been very heavily cropped, but looking at it on here, it's kind of got a little bit of an effect to it. I don't know if you run a filter through it, like a watercolour filter sort of a thing. I, d I don't know, an arty filter. Um, I think that distracts from it a bit because you've got such beautiful light um it, it just looks like it's 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 detracting from it as though it's had some sort of pastel filtery thing put on it i could be wrong um but i think you've got such lovely light it just needs a little bit of a subject going on in there um which is really cool this one's got a really beautiful subject going on in here rick <clears throat> that's deep man those lines coming in you know, I'm guessing you stood and you waited. You've got that really nicely put together. You got it really kind of well composed. I like the silhouette of the person. They're in a really great place. Now, what's bugging me is the fact there's another person growing out of them. Um, and this is hard. This is so hard. This is so hard. It's a, it's a decisive moment thing. It's like whether or not you could have waited a moment until that other person wasn't there or there is another way you could possibly have lost that person whether or not it would destroy your composition i don't know anyone want to comment what do you think you could do in that moment which might minimize the person beyond the main subject just chuck a little comment in there just as, as briefly as you can what do you think you could do and i'm not necessarily talking about photoshop yeah absolutely uh, look, here we go. Yeah, they're flooding in. Yeah. Jane Barnes, you might be in New Zealand, but you kind of got there. Oh, second. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> yeah. Just move a little tiny bit. Um, it's not somebody said move the camera higher. Linda, actually, uh, it's probably a little lower because if you could crouch, just bend your knees a bit and move to the left a bit, the alignment would change. And I think that person would have moved. Now I get it. This is fast moving stuff. Really, really difficult thing to do, particularly with this kind of photography. And you've been waiting, you've got your composition there. But great job, Rick. I do like that picture. We've got one more and we're into shortlist shout outs. God, what a gorgeous picture. Beautiful, 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 beautiful light. That soft, gentle, directional light is just bringing her face just so beautifully to life. The shapes and textures. She's backlit, but it's such soft, gentle light. And it's wrapping around her face. It is absolutely 
beautiful. I really, really love this. Um, I really do. My only thought is the tree. Is the tree a nuisance or not? And I've argued with myself about this. Um, is the tree just a little strong? I personally think the tree's just a bit too strong and it's fighting with her. It's fighting with her. Would it be possible, for, you know, I don't know if this is posed, whether you set this up or not. Your niece, I've just read it. Okay, maybe you could, all oh, right, here we go. As a model, cool. <clears throat> now this is tough. Could you have found a position where the tree isn't? Now I get it. You can't just turn. Yes, you can just turn and lose the tree, but if you just turn and lose the tree, what will you also lose, guys? What else will you lose if you just turn and lose the tree? Just pop it in here. What would happen if you just turn and lose the tree? Something else. Absolutely. Look at you banging this in here. Guys, read what some of these people are putting in here. It's the first comments. They were banging in fast. It's not her pose. It's, it's not the angle. It's the light. Because the moment you turn her round a little bit more, the light is becoming more directional. And all those beautiful shadows, that modelling, that texturing in her cheek and along the side of her nose, round her eyes, under her, her lip there, that is what is making this so delicately beautiful. And if you turned her into the light, you've lost it. Just like that. Gone. Forever. So it's a really tough one. Would it have been possible to get her to take a couple of steps back and you could go with her and then lose the tree that way? Maybe use a longer focal length lens so you've got a narrower field of view like that. And you might have just been able to lose that tree. But I'm being really picky here. It is a beautiful shot. It's gone eight o'clock. We've got to get into our shortlist shout outs. And I think I may even have to whiz forward a little bit through these. Now, guys, if your picture hasn't been pulled up and I haven't talked about it, it doesn't mean your picture is bad. It means that I can't talk about all of them, even though I would love to give you all feedback. That is not doable. Um, we are working on an idea where we can have... Um, a smaller group going on and uh, we can do more of this just I know I've been saying it for ages we're on the case um, anyway let's just have a little look I'm gonna go as quick as I can with these and young that is just so lovely that is just so lovely I just love it that little boat just sitting there You've got so much depth going on from the shore to the mountains to the sky and it's just we know right where to look that dark shadowy little boat the fact that it's dark to me just works i love it i think it's a great shot what more can i say what more can i say ed hicks i'm going to go quite quickly because i don't want to not bring any of these to the party that is just beautiful light going on Look at that sky. The way that the shadow, the shade, I'm looking again at my other monitor down here and, it, and it's not coming through YouTube quite as good as it is here. Apology, I don't know why. Um, that shape of the light. Now, we've got a little bit of kind of land going on, but just that light coming up into those clouds. It is such a simple picture, but it is just gorgeous. It's just simple and gorgeous. I find simple often is gorgeous beautiful shot Monica I think this is just exciting um, I really do I don't know if you've got multiple exposure going on I, whether you're doing like ICM and just sort of like because by the way guys you can do intentional camera movement you can if you've got a slow enough shutter speed and a steady enough hand or you can do it with a tripod if it's a really good one you can kind of go click and open the shutter and then move the camera a bit and then hold it still again and you can get this sort of effect I don't know if that's how you 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 did it, Monica, but I love this. I just think it's great fun. Is it? It might have been done in post-production. I don't know. Looking at the barrels or whatever they are on the side, on the right, you know, because they're not. But I think it's a great shot. I find it really intriguing, very interesting. There was some great stuff going on in here, guys, for this. Deep seemed to work for you. Cheryl Fisher, again. I'm not, I really like this. It, it's strong. It's powerful. I'm not sure you need quite such a heavy bit of vignette going on around the edges but I do really love it I really do 
deep thinking going on here, problems, issues, whatever. But this really has a smack of, you know, documentary photography. And I know that's what I like best. That's kind of what I do. Great shot, Cheryl. I really like it. And I love this one too. This one, I really, I just love it. The light coming through those trees. There's something deep and meaningful, I think, about that shot as well. It's contemplative. The light is beautiful. And the fact that you've got that little highlight coming through the leaves, that little bit of sunshine is, is gorgeous up in the top right because the seat of the swing is so bright in itself. The highlight in the corner isn't fighting with it. The swing is the thing. Um, and the backlight coming through those leaves, the way it's just held, you've got those, those tree trunks to hold it. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, what do you feel when you look at this, guys? I'm intrigued. What do you feel when you look at this? Um, what do you feel? What do you think when you look at this? What, what feeling does it put in your heart and your gut? Just, just say anything. Just say the first thing that comes out of your mouth. Just spurge it out. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, you can't get this wrong. It's just interesting. It makes me wonder about the, all the people that are saying that swing. Yeah, nice one, Daniel. It's kind of like that peaceful. Ah, right. Somebody's just said something. Which is what I kind of got. Oh, someone else has just said something on the same lines. Hmm. To me, I wonder who's not there. There's, there's, a, there's a slight loneliness about it for me. It's like, who's not there? It's almost like, I don't know, who's not there? Someone's grown up and left home. Somebody's away. Somebody's missing someone. It's something like that. That's what I get from this. Um, beautiful, beautiful picture. I do like it a lot. All oh, right, I need to talk to you. I do need to talk to you, Stephen James Barnett. Because, you know, it's, it's a really nice shot. You've got beautiful light. You've got great colours of greens and reds. And yet all you can say about it is it's probably the most boring, crappy photo of a toadstool. Um, forgive me, I've seen a lot of your comments about your own photography. Um, and I'm going to be kind of blunt here, I'm afraid, my friend, because do you think if you keep saying, oh, it's rubbish, it's no good often enough, it'll get better? No. Use that energy and put it to work. Because if you're doing this and you think this is crap, and it's great to always try and grow and expand, but if you're doing this and you think this is crap, think what you can achieve if instead of wasting that energy on complaining about how bad your photography is, you used it to improve your photography instead. That's all I can say. It's a great shot, beautiful light, well spotted, nice color, well composed. Please, please, please use that energy you're using to, to, to diss yourself, to grow yourself. I love this one here from Stephanie Moore too, light painting. It's something I've hardly ever done. Um, it's something I've hardly ever done. This is just like an angel. An angel with a lightsaber. I, <laughs> it's great. I don't know. It, it, it is it deep. I don't know. What is it? How do I? It, it, it makes me stop and think. So, yeah, to me, it still fits into the deep challenge. I think it's a really nice shot. I really do. My only bit of constructive criticism, I like what's going on down at the bottom. I like those little bits of light that are coming off the ground. Maybe tiny little bit more space up. I get it. It's really hard to figure. Where do I need to compose the shot so we can sort of do the light painting? Great shot. Nice one, Stephanie. Uh, oh, yeah, this one is just bittersweet. Lisa. I did read your description after I looked at the picture. And I think like many others, I just went, I just kind of like that. There's something moody, isolated and a bit lonely about you know, a kid's swimming pool on a misty morning, and now I kind of get it. That is the feeling the shot gives, but, you know, and I also get the power of that as a documentary image, that it is not a misty morning. It's the smoke from the fires around British Columbia, which is just so, so sad, these things we're seeing around the world. Um... I could see this in a newspaper. I could see this accompanying an article. 
in a newspaper about the subject. It's, 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 I think it's a very powerful image. If you put it into context, it is a very deep image indeed um, because it is, it is showing something. It is telling a story and it's quite a sad story and it is indeed, as Annette just said, very thought-provoking indeed. I really like that one, Lisa. I like the way you've been brave in your positioning too and you've got that little blue slide thing right in the middle of the shot. That's a brave thing to do. But it works, in my opinion. Haunting. Who said that? Sharon. I agree, Sharon Grigg. Here's a really beautiful thing. We've got another sunset thing going on. Somebody said earlier on you can't have too many sunsets. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sunset, I think. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful things. I get it, I get it, I get it. But I think also maybe it's like they are beautiful things. They're not very hard to photograph. Um, I think they are hard to photograph and get intriguing. And I really like this one, Dan. I really like this one because I like how you position things. You, you've made it really sunsetty and powerful because the lone tree against the sunset. But what I'm loving is how you've positioned these two things in your frame. You know, it'd be so tempting to go a classical rule of thirds. Okay, we'll have the tree down here over there and we'll have the sun up there over there. And you haven't. You've got them both in the middle, showing all that gorgeous space. And the way you've just got the tree and the sun right next to it, and it's just gone over the horizon. I think it's really, really nicely composed, beautifully done um, shot. I really do. Uh, we've got another. I must move on. I must get a move on. I like this one. Steve Swain. It's thought-provoking. That's what I liked about it. It's thought-provoking. You know, just having those items there. But what I do particularly like and congratulate you on is you said you did it at home. You know, this is just natural light coming in through a window. This is something, again, guys, that those of you who were in PLD in the early days when everything was during lockdown and God forbid, but I think we're probably going that way again. Um, when everything was within the confines of your own home. It just shows what you can do in your own home and the value of, of putting this stuff together in your own home, just using windows and, and what you've got because you can get beautiful shots and it's so much easier actually to control stuff in your own home. Everybody thinks, oh, I need to get out there into the world and go into the mountains and the hills. It's much harder to find photos in the mountains and the hills than it is in your own home. Agreed, Dick. That's exactly what I thought. Venice. Uh, Nicholas, I love this. What a great shot. What great use of light. Um, it's a gorgeous shot of a butterfly. Beautiful light on that butterfly. I really like, you know, your bravery and having that highlight of the light, the sun, whatever it may be in that top left corner of the frame. But it works. Sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have a really bright area and it fights with the subject. This doesn't. This enhances the subject. It kind of brings you through it. You almost slide down the light path from that light source to the butterfly. And I think it's great. I noticed in the thing, I did notice on here, you said you'd focus stacked it, focus stacked it. Fine, I'd say that's completely legitimate because if you are this close to your subject with a macro lens, even at f22, you will not get the whole of that butterfly sharp. It can't be done. You have got to take multiple frames and focus stack in order to get the butterfly and the flower sharp. No other way to do it. And I think you've done it beautifully. Congratulations. Stunning shot, stunning colors. I need to look at this one here um, because I just think it's a really interesting angle, Angela. Nice and simple. Red, green and blue. But the fact is, it's an interesting angle. You're deep in the undergrowth. It's an interesting angle. When you can shoot something from an, a, a point of view, an angle that we don't normally see them, it immediately makes it eye-catching. You've got great, you've got the perfect light. You see, in this case, the sun is high in the sky. I've talked about light a lot and getting the appropriate light for your subject. But also, it's a question of looking around at the light you've got and then finding a subject that's appropriate to the light. You've done it really well here because the light coming through those petals has made them kind of translucent and, and sparkly. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Someone here who, I confess, I do kind of, 
like your style of photography, and I know I've mentioned you before, Kosimi, but I really do like your use of shape and form and shadows. I think this is a lovely picture. And what really draws me to it is the movement. That's the bit which I just find so engaging. Um, the movement, the fact that we've just got a shadow of a little person sitting in a chair with their head down. But it's the movement, it's the swinging foot. I love it, and it's in a shadow. I just think it's great. Uh, where are we going? I think I got one more here, and then we're into our runners up. Mr. A. McDonald Rose. I had to pull this one out. I just think it's a glorious moment, perfectly captured. I really do. You got some great light, and it's just this little magical moment between the two of you. And I just think it is a beautiful picture. I can feel the attachment between you. And that is something, it's, it's, it's rare to get into a shot. It's rare to get if you can capture these feelings. Uh, I think it's really beautifully done. Constructive criticism, I don't really know that I have any. It, it might be a teeny little bit overexposed, but you know, I'm, I am nitpicking a bit. The highlights are a little bit bright on arm and hand, but <clears throat> I think that the, the moment kind of makes up for it. Beautifully done job, beautifully done job. So if I haven't pulled any of your, sh if I haven't pulled your shot out during this session, I apologize. There's been some amazing pictures. There's been a lot of other images that I've wanted to pull up because I wanted to say something to try and help that photographer. I hope that some of the criticism and comments that I've made thus far have been of value to everyone, including the photographer. Um, now we're going into our runners up as chosen by you guys. So how's this going to work? I am going to give my honest feedback and critique on these images. Um, however I feel about them is what I'm going to say. Um, and I think you've made some very good choices. I think, I think it would have been nice if a few more of you had had a go at the judging <clears throat> and, you know, spend a bit of time on it. And it does take a bit of time. I saw a few comments with people saying, this is hard work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It takes me 10 hours to do a PLD judging. From the time I start looking at pictures to the time I finish putting this live broadcast together and chosen what's what, that's 10 hours work. Anyway, let's get stuck in. Kim Goucher, you are our first runner-up as voted for by the people. <clears throat> and I love it. I love it. I really do. You're very good at this. You know, you've got a lovely little pool of light going on here. Um, lovely little pool of light. Um, I love the way, is this you, Kim? Are you here, Kim? Is this a selfie? Um, but it just works. The red hair against, you know, the greenery, that beautiful little pool of light that you're holding that little lantern there. I like the way you've been bold and had yourself or whoever this is. Kim, it's your daughter. Thank you. Congratulations, Kim. Um, the way you've got your daughter small in the frame. I do. I think it's a great shot. I love your use of light and dark and shade. It's a little bit mysterious. Beautiful photograph. Congratulations, Kim. Good choice, gang. <coughs> Dean. Another intriguingly deep picture. Now, we've seen a few from you over the weeks, haven't we, Dean? And, you know, good choice. It's, it's a really great shot. It is deep. What, what could say deep more than that? I mean, what can say deep more than this? We are in the ocean. It is like a scene from the movie Titanic somehow. I'm intrigued to know maybe how you shot it. I just think it's a great shot. Did you do it in a tank? Did you do it diving? I had no idea how you did it. Is it a composite? It doesn't matter. I really do like it. Use of light. You're very good with your use of space. Remember the snail shot. I'm sure that was you, Dean. You know, the, sm the snail on the edge, just on the edge of that bit of stonework. We see this quite a lot. Guys, if you want to learn a bit about using space again, I think, you know, looking at Kim and Dean's work, and others, of course, but... I think your use of space is really, really great. 
Dean, you're actually in a Tupperware sandwich box. How cool is that? How cool is that? <laughs> Isn't it amazing, you see, what you can do? Get this creative muscle going, guys, and you can dream up anything. A Tupperware sandwich box. Nice one. Nice one. Thanks, Dean. I can't see it. I don't know how you did it, but thank you for just sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Now here, of course, Naguer has voted for. It's a great moment, isn't it? It's a great moment. It's like, it's such an amazing thing to see these creatures, you know, in the wild. I, I was privileged enough to be in Western Australia in uh, near um, um, Exmouth, where the whales come in and the humpbacks are in there. And, you know, looking at these incredible creatures. Um, we n I never got a shot of one, you know, breaching like this. It is a really great little feeling. And, and in S in, out there at Exmouth as well, you're not supposed to go within 200 meters of the whales with any boat. And we couldn't get away from the damn things. They, some are in the distance, the rest of it. But we, we'd actually stopped our boat somewhere. There were no whales anywhere about having a sandwich, bit of lunch, cold beer. And then they just came under the boat and up the other side and then stuck his head out of the water and then another one next to him. And they were just, they were, they were people watching. We weren't whale watching, they were people watching. Even when we quietly started the boat and tried to back away, they weren't having any of it. They followed us. My friend's partner was sitting on the bow of the boat with her foot dangling over the side and one of them just popped out of the water. Because you're not supposed to touch them. She wasn't even looking. And one of them just quietly came out of the water and just nosed her foot like this. It's just the most amazing experience. Nagar, I like your shot. You've caught a great moment. And it's hard to capture these moments because they happen so fast. My constructive criticism to you would be if you could have got a bit more space. It may not be possible. I've been there. I've been there. You know, you've got the long lens on because you think all the action's over there and then suddenly a whale breaches right in front of you and you're like, no, I want a shorter lens. And you've just got to go with what you've got. But it's a great decisive moment, a great decisive moment. I love the water running off and, you know, it, it is backlit and I know how little control you have with these things. But, you know, well-captured shot. It is well-captured. Jamie Smith. <laughs> good choice it's, look at this it's, it's so serene isn't it we're going on a journey we're going on two journeys um, you know we're going on a journey down those I guess they're concrete you know breakwaters and then we got the you know the thing on the end of the groin there which is just an arrow taking us straight to heaven I just really do love it I do really like this um, I like the fact it's it's bright and it's light and yet dark and moody at the same time. It is a really interesting, intriguing shot. I like the way you've composed it, the, the, you know, the way you've just brought everything from the corner. I think it's a really nice, beautifully done image and black and white just works. Nice job, Jamie. Foggy Armstrong. <laughs> You're the master of colour. <clears throat> You're the master of colour. I like your use of depth and I love your use of colour. This is very well spotted and well captured because you've also got very highly appropriate light going on in this shot. You know, this, this light is just right for it. Your camera angle is just right. I love the way it, it's kind of symmetrical and yet somehow you get the feeling because of the slats on the left. You're, you're being drawn down, I don't know about you, I'm sliding down the left side. Um, I think it's a great shot. I'm not sure we need quite so much foreground, this, this piece on the left, because to me the shot kind of begins where, where the blue is. I'm not sure we need that big lumpy bit there. <clears throat> I just think it would benefit a little if there was something down at the far end in, in that space, because we're going on this lovely long deep journey, but it's kind of like we're ending in a fence. and. You've got such great light and you've so carefully put that together. I'd love to have seen just, I don't know, a little something on the destination. But nonetheless, it's a great shot. Beautiful colours, beautiful light. Congratulations. And that takes us on to 
your PLD Deep winner. And you chose Stephen Robson. And a great choice. <laughs> how can this not be deep and how can this not be a deeply engaging shot? And I love your thinking, Stephen. I really do. Okay, so let's look at the theme first, the deep. Well, how can it not be there? Look at those lines coming in. We're drawing you down into this underpass or whatever it is. The graffiti either side is intriguing. And the graffiti and the top, the rafters, the beams with those lines, which are kind of disturbing because they're at the wrong angle, but it works. They're all backlit. How cool is that? From the wool spinning going on at the end. <clears throat> now I've seen a lot of wool spinning shots, but I think where your absolute genius comes in is thinking of doing this in an underpass. Because instead of the wool spinning, instead of the sparks just sort of going off and fading in the distance, you've constrained them into a square, into a rectangle with that circle in the middle with your person in that circle. And I think that is so clever. I think that's a very creative thing to do. I've never seen it done before. I'm not saying it hasn't. Of course it has. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. But I think, yeah, it's a really creative idea to constrain that into a rectangle. And then we can see your, your wool spinner through the hole, the person in there. I think it's a great choice, guys. I think you did a really good job of judging this. Um, Congratulations to each and every one of you for taking part and for, you know, joining in, being part of this. Now, when it comes to judging, moving forwards, you kind of didn't like doing the judging. So, yeah, uh, I'm back on it. Uh, that was the general consensus. We didn't have quite so many people joining in this time, you know, and I'm guessing that was part of it. I had a few quite angry emails come in as well. Um, anyway, as I said, enough of that. Lesson learned earlier. Congratulations to all of you winners and all of you runners out. I think you produce some amazing, amazing pictures. So I guess that brings us to the end of another lockdown live it's just gone 8:30 i'm only 6 minutes over this time <laughs> i've never been under have i got be git anyway uh yeah it's been a pleasure talking to you uh you've blown me away and please give the next challenge your best shot another big shout out to all of you who entered the uh alabare competition you did a bit of good there you paid your little contribution, your entrance fee. You're helping them do some good work. Um, and it was my dream that a PLD would get in there and a whole load of you did. So you're rocking it. Congratulations, guys. Have a lovely evening. The next challenge video will be live very shortly indeed. Take care till next time. Be well. Be happy.